Hey, thanks for checking out the Orlando Baptist Church podcast. On today's podcast, we are talking about what it looks like to rest in God, not just be following after the craziness of the world and always being tired, but actually getting real rest. In just a minute, Pastor Corey, Pastor Dustin, and I talk about this. If you find today's video helpful, please hit the like button. Let's get into it. Well, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the podcast of OBC. It's good to see you. We are excited today. We're going to be talking about a couple different things, Um, but today the topic is going to be rest. What we do for rest, what God commands for rest for his people. Um, But as we're getting started, just to kind of kick off things, what do you guys want to do this summer in regards to rest? Yeah, so today is, what's the last day of school? Amen. So it's officially summer. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. We have some family stuff planned. Um, and I think something good to talk about as we talk about rest today is how to rest when your kids are at home. Yeah, yeah man. Because how to rest in real life. Like that's it's it's hard to do, but also like we should be able to enjoy rest with our families and yeah. Yeah. not like rest only happens when I have a babysitter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just as as families, you know, how do we enjoy rest with our kids and, and feel rested after spending time with our kids? Sure. Um, but, but I'm looking forward to spending time with my kids. Um, you know, we're, we're blessed to have a pool at our house. So we'll, we'll swim in the pool and grill hot dogs and And invite other families over. Yeah. Sure. (laughs) Okay. Just checking. Yeah. PTM. Yeah. Um, we're on uh, that $20 plastic pool game. Yeah. Mm Get one once a month, throw it away. Whatever it takes, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, get just that sprinkler in the front yard. Mm. It's just every time you mow the yard, you're like, oh, this is yeah. <laughs> this is this is also killing, irreversible. Killing patches of grass. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every, well, and it's just yeah. baked on there, just yeah. blades of grass. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So but talking about that, like when you're with your family, how do you have rest? Because it's a different type of rest right. than like, wow, I feel like I've completely not done anything and I feel yeah. rested. But like what do you focus on? Because that's that's really what it's about. What are you focusing on to get that soul yeah. rest, even though it might be enjoyment? Physically? Yeah, like how do we enjoy our families? Um, and so I, I think first of all, it starts with this deep understanding that like our families should bring us joy, yeah. and that and that's not okay, kids. It's your responsibility to give me joy. Mm-hmm. It's as people created in God's image and he has given us the ability to procreate that's part of being created in his image, the way he finds joy in his creation as parents, we should find joy Mm -hmm. in our children. Yeah. Um, You know, scripture says children are inheritance from the Lord. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. In other words, like the more the merrier, like, and there should be joy in that. And so it doesn't mean that we have to force our kids into this mold that gives us joy. It means our job is to find joy in our kids. So if we're not doing that, then we're missing the mark as parents. So you can find joy in throwing a baseball with your kid. You can find joy in watching a movie together with your kids. You can find joy in ordering pizza and building a fort. Yeah. You know, um, one thing that I've done a lot and this has been really helpful is the kind of see something, say something Yeah, is like, it is a joy for a parent to say, Hey, I see this in you and you're really good at this. And like for both of our kids, that's been a huge thing of like, Hey, I've seen you working on this specifically with some of the stuff that they struggle with. Right. Um, whether it's anxiety or anything like that. Hey, I see you working on that. Mm -hmm. I see you talking to your own heart and all that. I'm really proud of you. Those things. So even on days where it's hard, yeah, there's still joy to be had on those days because it's like we can do what God does with us, where he encourages us as we're growing. So, yeah. uh, yeah. What about for you guys? How do you have joy in parenting? Yeah, I think I've had to come to the realization that um, easy doesn't mean restful. Mm -hmm. Like even there's certain times you can say like, okay, we have this day off. Like I'm tired. The best thing we can do is just like, lay around and stay in our house or like just put something on the TV. Like if you're in that kind of like exhausted, which happens yeah. all the time. Um, but that's not, it doesn't provide the joy you think it will. 
that's what I've had to learn. Like, so on days off for us, it's realizing there's like, we like to go on like family walks that are long and whether that's all of us or if I just take one of my kids or CJ doesn't like to be pushed in a, like in a jogger anymore Mm -hmm. and him walking on his own is, yeah, it's an adventure. (laughs) So, um, yeah, just kind of realizing that, yeah, being fulfilled or even resting isn't necessarily from just staying idle yeah. right. or laying on the couch yeah. is not at the end of the day. You're not like it wasn't, you might've been physically laying down and not exerting energy, but you weren't being filled. And that's kind of like biblical rest is allow like, or Sabbath rest is filling your soul back up. Like, right. and sometimes that is taking a nap. Yeah. If you need to take a nap, sometimes when you're a parent and you're don't get to take a nap, like, and so it's just kind of the, but even like us going in the backyard and filling up a pool and doing that a bunch of times is a lot of work for me, but it pans out into a joyful experience. And it's not l- like sometimes laziness just makes it worse. Mm-hmm. It's kind of what I Well, it's, you know, s- just scrolling on your phone. Yeah. You may be laying on the couch, yeah. but that is not restful. That right. it, it causes anxiety. It, yeah. it causes, you know it can cause lust, it can cause jealousy, yeah. it can yeah. cause covetousness. None of those things fill your soul. Yeah. They rob your soul yeah. of joy. So even though you might be laying around the couch, you're not resting. Right. Yeah. It's the, it's You've the hyper turned opposite. your brain on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and caused all kinds of things that really are sinful impulses. Yeah. Um, whereas some effort, I mean, for me, like working in my yard is restful. Mm. I still mow my own grass and, you know, and have a butterfly garden. (laughs) I have a butterfly garden. Um, and that's restful for me. It's work, um, for sure, but it's restful. Mm. Uh, it's restful work and I get joy in, in cultivating things, seeing the orderliness of, of things. Um, you know, whether pulling weeds, I, I pull weeds, Anywhere I go, if I if I go to a stranger's house and I see weeds, I pull them. <laughs> like, Don't feel bad if he's yeah. at your house. It doesn't. Uh, so if you have a lot of weeds, invite me over. Yeah. You know, um, so th- there's just something to that yeah. act of, you know, of cultivating that yeah. that gives me joy and rest. And it, yeah. and so I think we've gotten like we've misunderstood rest as idleness, and yeah. and the Bible. Yes says don't be idle yeah you know yeah Yeah. um and idleness is not rest rest is is joy and that's kind of where yeah taking a nap is restful just laying on your couch unless you're just like reading like fiction or something that's turning your brain off is not really like if we just lay on our couch and watch like sports center all day you're not going to wake up and be like i feel ready for the day now Mm -hmm. you're going to be like I just wasted three hours of my life. Yeah. Or if you take a nap, you're like, that was physical, mental, all the kind of good rest rest, and you wake up and like, I'm glad I was able to do that. Yeah. And I, I get to take a nap like once a month. I'm a parent. Yeah. I do think there's times too, though, like for us, we are movie buffs and it's really fun to sit down together and watch mm-hmm. movies, specifically movies that I loved as a kid. And I get to like yeah. show them that. So there's, but even that's relational. That's not yeah, just like, right. that's not vegging out. That's, mm-hmm. that's relational kind of building. So um, and a movie is not scrolling from video to video. Sure, like yeah. It's, social media you made a and, decision to do that on purpose. Yeah, having that dopamine addiction is rough. <laughs> we um, pizza picnics were have been a family rhythm for us. Um, you know, on a weekend night, we we used to put a picnic blanket on the floor of our living room mm-hmm. and eat pizza and watch a movie. Yeah, that's great. And. Um, and then we got a dog and we stopped eating pizza on the floor because the dog wanted to eat pizza with us. And so uh, we don't do it that way anymore. Uh, and then we got two boys that had a hard time staying on the blanket yeah. to eat their pizza. So, uh, but we still do it. Um, and so we just eat our pizza at the kitchen table and then we move to the couch or to mm-hmm. the floor and, and watch a movie. But one of one of my favorite things at the end of, of almost any movie, especially a family movie, there's always a great closing song at the credits. Mm -hmm. And so it just becomes a random dance party. And, you know, and so those are just joyful, fun memories and moments that I, you know, Carly is graduating this year, but from the time she was two years old, we've been doing that. 
And mm. so we've got, you know, years of those memories and, um, and it's restful. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm filled with joy. It, I'm, I'm a sucker for, yeah. for that stuff. So, you know, almost any family movie night, I'm, you'll find me crying at some yeah. point, you know, uh, so, uh, do you find that weekly, like a calendared weekly night where you do that is restful because it's oh, like, yeah. you know, it's coming. Everyone it, looks forward that's to it. Sabbath. Yeah. That is yeah. Sabbath. Like the rhythm of, and it gets harder. The older your kids get, the harder it gets. Cause they yeah. have, stuff have sports or things at school and jobs and friends. So it does get harder, but, but yes, you know, the rhythm of that, you know, for us, even knowing a certain night of the week, mm-hmm. we're going to have tacos or we're going to have spaghetti. Fajitas are a big hit in our house. Yeah. Like to put a big in all houses steaming plate bowl of yeah. you know sh- sliced chicken in the middle of the table and everybody just gets to reach in. Mm-hmm. Like that's just a fun. Yeah, that's probably one of the most restful. It's a it's a lot of effort. Yeah, yeah like it's a high effort meal to like mm-hmm. you know cook the sliced fajita veggies mm-hmm. and you know and grill the chicken and make the rice and all the stuff and then put all the sides on the table takes effort, but there's joy in it. Yeah. You know, it's just a fun meal that we enjoy together. So, which I think that's another important part of rest. Like it takes effort. Yeah. My, it might be lead in effort. Like yeah. I, we're going to do this thing as a family tonight and we're, and we're going to enjoy it. But to do that, I need to go make sure I have this yeah. done. I need to make sure and check the, mm-hmm. the tick, the things off the checklist in my brain so that I can be present. I need to go to the grocery store and get this. I need, you know, yeah. um, it might take a little prep, but then, mm-hmm. yeah, then you can really enjoy it. So you have that, that kind of weekly rhythm. Is there any monthly or yearly rhythm do you guys have in, in your rest? When I'm, we'll talk about optimized me, like, <laughs> <laughs> see how rare that is but like in work life if everything is going you know if it does go according to plan I like to do I call it like a working Sabbath which would be like maybe the last Thursday of the month or something where I would just like go kind of actively like when it's not hot especially it's way easier in the winter yeah. like just go sit and read a book outside or read my Bible or walk and pray like do things but like purposely plan out time or even pray through like the month like that's like a monthly rhythm i've had and i've been bad at it but when i do it i'm like why do i not always do this like look back at the month see what we can praise god for what i did well what i didn't do well that i need to make what priorities did i miss that i need to be and like plan ahead for the next one that's like but again if you real life happens sometimes yeah. and you have to make that a priority yeah. and it kind of seems like when you get to it you're like but there's more pressing urgent things to do i don't have time to do that and so it's it's tough to I do, do find it less pressing though when you have a good weekly rhythm to make sure that you have that monthly kind of I, thing. yeah it's like back in the day i was trying to do like a day of solitude and at some point i was just like this is probably great I just can't do this. Right. Like I've yeah. got, you got to be realistic. Right. I mean, that's, that's the big yeah. thing is to, and especially, you know, we've talked about this multiple times, but like we read these books of all these people who have written down their optimal thing. Yes. But like, do they really do this all the time? Also they're written when they're like 58. Yeah. They're empty they're, nesters. They're, they're, yeah. Kids are yeah. gone. They've got nothing to do. So, and, like, yeah. Unf- I, when I think about rest and stuff, I, I feel like I read a bunch of books early on in ministry that kind of messed me up because I was just newly married, didn't have kids yet. And I was reading these like guys that had burned out writing about, make sure you don't burn out and like what their rhythms of rest were. And I tried to copy and paste them into my life. And it almost just like, it can become an idol of like, well, it almost like, made you burn out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. seriously. It's so hard to not burn, like, not burn oh, out. Like, oh, this person puts their phone, like when they get home on their day off, puts their phone in a drawer for 24 hours. Like the thought of opening my phone after 24 hours, and like, we're not a huge church. Like, yeah. to like, 
I, I don't know. It was way more stressful and did right. a lot of a lot of harm. So what like, yeah, we have to be careful about and we're all different. Like you like gardening, like I or like we all have certain things. Like being in nature is good for every human being. Yeah. That is a common grace of God. And what you do in it or I mean, we don't all like the same thing, so trying to copy and paste somebody else's spiritual rhythms can be harmful sometimes. So what do you guys notice in your life? You know, the the, the question of like what's at stake if you don't rest? What have what have you noticed in your life when you're not rested? When you're overworked? Like what what happens in oh, your life? I'm a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like short with my family. I um, when when I feel stressed out, I want to. Be, it's because uh, I don't feel in control of my life, yeah. and so I want to control everything else. So hmm. I want to control my kids. I want to control my wife. If you know, if everything's not happening perfect, you know, if dinner's not ready when the second I think it yeah. should be ready, if if it was my night to make dinner and all the kids are not sitting at the table the second dinner's ready. Or Lord forbid, they don't like what you made. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you kids yeah. will eat this. Yeah. Um, and and all of a sudden, what could be a joyful experience yeah. turns into conflict. Yeah. Um, and, and it's because I'm trying to force, uh, I'm trying to force them into some kind of mold it, it's the thing like m- my job is to experience joy from my family not to make them give me joy yeah and when i'm stressed and you know and too busy then i want to make them fit yeah the mold instead of me being in a place where i can freely enjoy the gift yeah. of grace that they are in my life mm-hmm. and so I'm trying to cram them in to make me feel good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I find myself super irritable. Just yeah. anything anybody says annoys me. Yeah. I annoy me. Like, yeah. it's just, yeah. just a constant of annoyance. It is be, it, part of it is I start I start trying to be the sovereign of my own life. I start trying to sure. you know, control the future, and I try to think of, like, well, if I do this, 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 and this, I can create this outcome instead of resting in the fact that I am in God's world, living God's plan and my family is part of that plan. But when I start to try to be the, the only shaper of my family and the only shaper of my own heart and all that, it just, it it just gets so messy because I'm not rested. I think I have to work more than I actually have to. And I think that it's so interesting that the Lord set up this, this style of living of like, be still and know that I'm God. And in that, put effort into things. Mm-hmm. But like when I stop the be still and know that I'm God, then my putting effort into things really gets out of whack. Yeah. So I don't know. What about for you? It's kind of everything you guys said. And yeah, I get irritable and short. And so going back to kind of a daily rhythm that like optimum me. And thankfully the last couple of weeks I've been doing it of waking up earlier than I want to before my family does and reading and praying and like exercising, like to the point where Chrissy's made comments like, man, I like this version of you. Mm. Like, and so that is even motivating because if there's a visible difference of how I live my life, like from a month ago to two weeks ago, like I don't have an option to not do that. And so that I think fleshes it out of why I'm usually irritable and short and not resting in the Lord because I'm like disappointed in myself mm. when I let the day happen to me. Mm. Yeah. And I don't, it's really, yeah, like I like getting up early helps me not be like, like I get stressed out when like stuff is happening and I haven't, I like to plan and to prepare and to just be not surprised by things. And so I'm usually irritable and cranky and, not the best version of me. Yeah. So I can attest to that because <laughs> when I first came back, oh, I thought you had an example of me. Oh, no, you do? That yeah. I used to enjoy startling you. Oh. <laughs> I would like to hide around corners and, and Just, surprise Corey. Yeah. Not and I, he didn't enjoy it. Yeah. So no. that's, yeah. 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 Okay. So that's rest for us. 
it's easy to, to kind of think through all the ways that you can get better rest and all that. But how do you guys set up a life where the people who are who you serve, hmm. your wife, your kids, the church, how do you set up a, a life and example for them? What kind of experiences for them for them to rest? I think what Corey just said is that like when he is operating he talked about his kind of morning rhythm that he's in right now when he's operating that way and allows the Lord to give him joy and rest. Then his wife says, man, this is a really great version yeah. of you. Yeah. And so, you know, as, as men, we are called to be spiritual leaders of our house. And that doesn't just mean that we do devotions right. with our kids. That means we set the tone yep. for experiencing God. Mm -hmm. Um, and so for us to operate in a place of joy and rest, we set the tone for our kids and for our wives to experience the joy and rest of who God is instead of, you know, the anxiety and the, um, the toil and the restlessness yeah. of, of some kind of pursuit uh, and, and, yeah, so. And I think that all kind of goes back to what we started at is it's more restful. You'll have a more restful life the more you work hard in the past for it. Like it's proactivity. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I like the rhythm I'm in. I'm in like it's proactive. But even like the best dates we can go on with our wives are when we plan them yeah. like well. Like, of course, we're saying all this with God says, don't even worry about tomorrow. Yeah. But again, we live, well, it's not be still and know I got taking responsibility for yes. today. Like, but that as spiritual leaders, like the more we can bear on our shoulders to, to set this night as this. And the more we have rest in the Lord and can be proactive, that helps our families like flourish in that. Yeah. Like that helps and if we say, hey, we're going to do this on this night, or if you know Clive, like if you start watching him, there's something that makes him anxious and something that you just see him come alive in and you help. If you're not thinking about yourself and can see and point him to do that thing and encourage him to like you're helping him do that. And it but it takes it takes proactivity. Yeah, like I, think, I liked uh, that. I don't know. The little statement that you just said, it's not worrying about tomorrow. It's taking responsibility for today. I don't know if you read that somewhere or if I that did not. just. Guys, it's all from right the noggin. Right here. Thanks, fellas. Thanks. That was a good one, folks. <laughs> Title of this don't podcast. That'll here. preach. That'll preach. It's not worrying about tomorrow. It's taking responsibility for today. That's how you get rest. I think we need a banner. Like in a, I think it's a time to move on to that. the next all topic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, but rest is great. It's good for your families. Do it. Um, I do think one last one last thought, real quick. Yeah, you, you talked about you talked about my son, like what makes him anxious and all that. I do think understanding the way that your your family members individually experience love, like the five love languages, that's really restful for somebody to have their love tank filled up is a restful yeah. thing because you're not on survival mode. You're on yeah. that kind of thriving mode. So that's good. So in the comments below, let us know how do you like to rest? How do you enter into that rest? that God has for you. If you enjoyed the conversation, hit the like button, consider subscribing, and we'll see you all in the next one.